Hey, good evening. It's Thursday, November 5th. I'm a day behind. I thought it was the 4th till I looked at the clock, till I looked at the calendar today and realized it was November 5th. So I missed a couple birthdays of mine. Um, Sister-in-law Sarah's birthday was on the 4th and my uh, and my dear friend Lauren uh, his birthday was on the 4th, and I thought they were both today, so I was all mixed up. So, good to be with you. I see there's a few of you on. It hasn't shown who you are yet, but I can guess Bill Gates could be one of them. My cousin Laura could be one of them. Uh, have to see who got on early tonight. So, uh, my eyes are still in bad shape, if you can see the color. They're... Um, they're not responding to medicine yet, so I'm hoping I would ask for a little prayer. If you would say a prayer for me that my eyelids will get better, uh, that the medicine will work, and uh, I can get out of this flare that I'm having with them. It's just been, I've had it for over a month on and off, and uh, I thought the medicine was going to really do the job. It worked one day, and then I woke up uh, yesterday. It was not good, and... Uh, Today, I think it's even worse. It looks pretty bad. So, anyway, if you wonder why I look strange, it's because my eyelids look so strange. So, it's not telling me who's with me tonight. Who's here? Can you, can you, oh, Laura, I know you're, you're here. See, I said I thought you might be here. So, I, I had a feeling, but I don't know who anybody else is. So, it's not coming up. Is Betty on here? Is Phyllis on here? Who's on here? Who's, who's, who's with me tonight? So, I hope it will come up and uh, and tell me who it is soon, because uh, I would really, really like to know. So, um, oh, good evening, Phyllis. Thank you for putting a note up, because like I said, I don't know who's on. Um, Ellie, good evening. Good evening. Glad to have you. I hope your house is getting worked on, and um, I hope that is getting uh, taken care of. Hey, Cheryl, good evening. Good evening. I don't know if you all were on when I was saying my eyes are, my eyelids are still in flare. The medicine's not working like it needs to. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping it'll help and work um, soon. So if you say a little prayer for that. Okay, Laura. Okay, praying for your job interview. That's tomorrow. Praying for that. Also praying uh, for cousin uh, Stephanie Wewell, who will be getting married on Saturday. Uh, that they, everybody who comes will be safe and stay healthy. And um, I know that there's family traveling for the, hey, Matthew, hey, Betty, hey, Heather. Hope you all are doing well. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to have you on. Hi, Matthew, if you're watching, I hope you're there. Um, one note for tomorrow, and I'll say this at the end too for some people get on later, but... Um, we may be recording earlier tomorrow. Sam is going to help his orchestra. This is his senior year, and this is his fourth year with his high school orchestra. He's been in orchestra for eight years, so he loves, loves, loves orchestra. And they are having an outdoor garage sale on Saturday at Union Grove High School in McDonough, so he wants to go help. So we may be recording earlier, at, at, but Samuel is thinking he can put it up at 7 o'clock. So we may do that so he doesn't have to hurry about things. So, um, okay, Sharon asked for prayers for her daughter's friend, Marissa. She's been cancer-free for two years, but a tumor was just found on her brain on Monday. I will definitely, Sharon, be praying for her. I'm writing it down as I see it. Um, so they have to do it. I would assume they have to do a biopsy or, or are they talking, I guess, surgery with the brain. It's a different, can be a different thing. So tumor found on brain. The past, this past week after two years cancer free. Okay. We'll, we'll be praying for her. We'll be praying for the best for her. So, um, definitely, definitely, definitely. So, I'm sorry to hear that. That's that's tough, tough stuff to, to hear. So, we'll be praying for that. 
So Ellie says, Ellie, my friend Ellie, whose house had a tree crash into her house, says two big dehumidifiers in both bathrooms. Tree is still in backyard, but insurance is keeping in touch. Okay. All right. Well, we're praying that it all get resolved to the best for you and also for Pastor Barbara. Um, Pastor Barb, who many people at St. John knows, I've mentioned her. She and her daughter and grandson were moving to Ohio. Their house was closing here in Noonan on October um, 12th, I mean November 12th. And with that storm, uh, there was great damage done to the house. They're waiting to hear if their insurance company is going to repair it or tear it down. So they uh, were looking for an apartment. They have a dog and a cat, and they don't, the, they're non negotiable. The dog and cat go with them because they're family. So they ask for prayers so they can find a place to live. And I'm, I'm also praying that everything will work out for the best for them. Um, they were moving to Ohio to be close to a, friend, a very, very close friend. Uh, everything was set. They had found a house, everything. And now this has happened. So if you would please keep Pastor Barb Gibson and her family in your prayers, um, I would be most grateful for that. So, okay. Um, tonight I'm reading from, again, this week is Daily Guidepost. I'll read from another book next week. Um, but although there's a couple in here that I think fit Veterans Day and... Um, so uh, I may be reading some of those next week too. Um, so this one is, the scripture is short. It's what I say a lot from Jesus, Matthew 19, 19. Love your neighbor as yourself. Carol Kuykendall writes, I heard the ambulance siren roaring through the neighborhood and then it abruptly stopped at our neighbor's house. Oh no, what could that mean? Later in the day, I learned Jake, the husband and father in that house, had suddenly collapsed. He was taken to the hospital where he died. Cars gathered in the driveway as adult children showed up. The note on their front door, they closed their family circle, telling neighbors they needed privacy in their grief. I understood and respected their wishes, of course. Thank you, Ellie. I really appreciate that. I hope thought this medicine would do it, so we're praying it, it will come through for my eyes. Yet I kept looking at the house thinking there must be something I could do. I know how that feels when you want to help somebody and you know you can't fix what happened, but you want them to know you care. I fell asleep that night praying for Jake's family and asking God to give me some way to reach out to them. The next morning I woke up thinking about pumpkin bread. That's not surprising. I love pumpkin bread, but hadn't made it in many months. And it wasn't even close to Thanksgiving when many people think about pumpkin bread. As I made coffee, I decided to bake Jake's family some pumpkin bread, which I did that afternoon. Two loaves. While they were still warm, I wrapped the loaves in foil, tied bows around them, and attached a note about sharing their sadness. In the gathering darkness, I left the two loaves just outside their front door, confident that with all the cars in their driveway, they would find the pumpkin bread. Later that evening, Jake's wife, now widow, texted this message. I absolutely love pumpkin bread. In fact, your pumpkin bread was my dinner. It was just what I needed. Thank you. Who knew that pumpkin bread would be just what she needed? Well, God did, and God told me. And the prayer is this. Lord, when I fall asleep with a prayer in my heart, you sometimes put an answer into my waking thoughts. I praise you for that and ask that you continue to nudge me toward ways to meet my neighbor's needs. Amen. I love that. That's a beautiful prayer. When I fall asleep with a prayer in my heart, you sometimes put an answer into my waking thoughts. You know, I often say to people that God nudges us. God um, uh, can wink at us. God can... Give us ideas of, you know, if, if somebody if somebody comes on my heart, if I somebody out of the blue uh, comes to my mind, then I I try to follow that um, sense and um, reach out to them. 
And it's really interesting reading this because I read this, but not super close. And we were just finishing dinner and I was like, okay. And I couldn't find my other booklet I wanted to use. And anyway, Laura, since you're on here, reading this made me think of your mom, my Aunt Eileen. And you know what it reminded me of? All the times we'd come over and your mom would make frosted pumpkin bars. Hello, Sheila. It's so good to have you on here. I have missed seeing you. I'm glad you're on here. My Aunt Eileen, my cousin Laura's mom, made the most amazing frosted pumpkin bars. They were fabulous. And then um, at um, We Belong and the church we served in Bloomington, Illinois, Aaron Lucky made fabulous pumpkin bars. And Janine Byfus made fabulous banana frosted bars. Now, I don't know, I haven't thought about that in a while, but I have never made frosted pumpkin bars. I should do that, and I think that I will do that in honor of Aunt Eileen because she always made, they were amazing. And I remember eating them in your kitchen and I remember just how wonderful they were. And Laura, if you have that recipe, maybe I can get that from you because I would really, really love to make them. You know, sometimes what I love about this devotion is sometimes it's the smallest things we do that can touch somebody's heart. There are just times in our lives when we go through the worst of times, when we lose loved ones, when we get a diagnosis, when our life seems to be falling apart, and somebody reaches out to us and they and they do what they think is a small thing, but it means the world. Because it means somebody noticed them. Because somebody cared about them. Today, our friend Lauren, who I have been off, I said at the beginning, I have been off a day because I worked the election. I was a manager. Monday, we spent the day setting up. I worked the whole day Tuesday. Yesterday, I was trying to um, do some work and get myself back together. And Thursday, I'm, I'm still, I was a little tired tonight. Uh, and worked, excuse me, out of church tonight, but today, but, um, but anyway, so I was saying about my sister-in-law, Sarah, well, my friend Lauren is the one I've asked for prayers for. She's gone through a really, really, uh, terrible time. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'll get you on the bus. Um, Dad's, da Dad's downstairs, Christopher. Dad is downstairs. Dad will get you on the bus. Yes, he will. Sorry. Sorry, Dad. Oh, I have to talk about Dad, what Dad does. But anyway, um, so Lauren has gone through some horrendous things, something that you don't ever want your friends to go through. And through no, nothing she did, she lost. Well, no, it was not a fire. I really... Can't say a whole lot about it, but she lost every piece of clothing she had, except for what she had on. And she loves, there's a chocolate ganache cake at Publix that she loves. And I try to give it to her every year for her birthday because she loves it so much. And I'm like, I can't make a chocolate ganache. I mean, I could make cake. I've never, I don't think I've ever really made chocolate ganache cake. But so anyway, David took that over and I bought her some clothes and... Um, through some help of several churches, we were able to get her gift cards so she can go get clothes because, I mean, she literally has little to nothing. And so, but when I looked at the calendar today, I realized yesterday was her birthday. I was off a whole day, and I could have done that tomorrow, yesterday, and I felt so bad. And I told her that. I said, I'm really sorry. I missed your birthday. I'm really, really sorry. Um, I just was just, just everything has thrown me off, and so... But anyway, she was gone when David dropped everything off with her son. And when she came home, she sent us both a note and she said that we, that she was so happy and that we had made her heart happy and she hadn't felt that good in a while. And I thought, wow, you know, sometimes you, what you and I do can make a real difference in somebody else's life. And sometimes it can be as simple as pumpkin bread Sometimes it can be as simple as noticing that somebody's going through a hard time and reaching out to them, sending them a text, giving them a phone call, letting them know you're thinking about them. Um, 
it's not all about words, you know? I mean, this was a simple note of I'm thinking of you and I'm sorry for your loss and, and making some pumpkin bread. And all too often, we sometimes somehow think we've got to have these amazing words to say to somebody. But you know what? We can't take away losses like this or tragedies that happen. But what we can do, what we can do is say simply, I'm praying for you. I'm here for you. Um, I've often told people in the last number of years, um, instead of saying, well, if you need me, call me. I say most people who are going through a hard time are not going to call you. They're not going to text you. They're not going to pick up the phone. It's the rare individual that does that because people don't want to bother other people. And so many other people move, go on in their life. They like grieve with them for the moment and then they move on. And this person's still in their grief. And so what I tell people is um, mark down on your calendar. Try to remember if you can their birthday or maybe the person who died's birthday or, you know, a special day and just reach out to them and say, I'm going to come take you to lunch. I'm going to bring you dinner. When, what day this week can I bring you dinner? Um, I'm praying for you. Um, send a card. I mean, um, for all, and most of you have been through this. You've lost parents. You've lost um, friends. Um, you've, you know, you've gone through difficult things. I, the things that have mean the most is when people show up, when people get in touch, when people send a card, when um, I'm just always very moved by that. And what it's taught me is that I may, there may not always be something I can do, but I can always pray and I can always let the person know I'm thinking of them. And I love this story because she knew that they didn't want other people around, but when she woke up, she felt on her heart, well, maybe it's pumpkin bread, you know? And she did that, and it made a real difference. And it was just what the, the person needed. So, you know, we're all, it's, it's a tough time. We've been going through so much this year. I mean, this has been one heck of a rough year, and I hope that you have some joy in every day. And I hope, like me, that you are counting your blessings. You're giving thanks. Um, one of the things I give thanks for today is for Nanette Steraha. She is a member of Amazing Grace in Lawrenceville. That was the first interim that I served in 20... Okay, wait a minute. We moved back in 2014, 2015. I was there for about a year. And Annette is a super senior. She's got lots of energy. She still teaches piano. Ellie, she's like you. She's she's still teaching piano. She's I don't know her age. She's somewhere in her 70s, maybe early 80s, but she still has lots of students that she teaches. She still drives her car. She gets out. She does things. Ellie, you're a super senior too. Definitely. You are definitely one. Anyway, she I hadn't talked to her in a long time. She called me today. She called me and left me a message and said, I'm out enjoying the sunshine. And I was just wondering how you are. So I was driving to church. I don't have to drive major highways to go to church. So I said to, you know, Siri, you know, I want to talk. I want to call Nanette Sterha. And I had the most lovely conversation with her. And I loved her language. She she uses all these amazing words and they're big. I mean, I know that sounds funny, but I was just like, I was listening to her talk and I was like, wow, she's just amazing. And she's saying, oh, you know, my, I'm being really careful, but I have a coffee class. We sit outside and sit apart and drink our coffee and visit. I have great neighbors. They look out for me and we watch out for each other. And she said, and I still have my piano students and. I'm practicing because I'm going to be playing with some of them and uh, they're going to have a concert soon. And I'm like, wow, she is just amazing. I think I needed to talk to her today. I haven't talked to her in maybe even a couple years. And that she was thinking about me and called me was so wonderful. And I, I was like, I got to call her back. 
because often when I'm driving, coming or going, I will often call people and have good conversations because I have a, about a 40 minute drive. So we talked for about 20 minutes. I had already had a conversation with Sherry Chidwell, checking up on her. And, um, and so then I called Nanette and it was just so wonderful. And you know, I'm thankful for that today. I'm thankful for the joy of hearing her voice, hearing how well she's doing and knowing that she is still blessing other people. Uh, just with her enthusiasm and her joy in life and her um, joie de vie is what I'm going to say because she's just an amazing lady. So that was just really such a blessing to me. So I'm thankful for Nanette today. I'm thankful for all of you. I'm thankful um, I'm thankful to be alive. I'm thankful that even with the problems with my eyes that I'll get through this. Um, there are just so many things I have to be thankful for. And I hope that if you haven't been counting your blessings, that even in the midst of all the craziness of the world, that you will uh, think of th three things. If there's someone on your heart, reach out to them. Send them a card, text them, write them a note. Just say, I was thinking of you and I wanted you to know that. And I'm praying for the best for you. You know, just something simple. Doesn't have to be big words, things like that. It's just, you know, letting other people know that you're thinking about them. And that you're grateful for them. Because this is November. And, and it's a month to be thankful. And so hopefully every night. I'll share something I'm thankful for. And I hope you will share things with me. That you are thankful for. Because I'd be glad to lift up anything. That you're thankful for. Um, that's a good thing. Um, so. I know that sounds a little weird. But sometimes we're thankful for things that aren't so good. Which maybe there's a blessing in that. I don't know. But anyway. So I'm, I'm very, very thankful um, for a lot of things. And I know this too shall pass. So I'm just hanging in there uh, and not giving up. And if it doesn't get better, then I'll have to, I'll have to find an ophthalmologist or my dermatologist to get into and see if there's something else we can do. But I'm going to give it some time. I'm not going to rush about it. I'm going to just do my best. So, and I hope that you all are doing well. And I really appreciate you coming on and being with me and I pray that uh, whatever's going on in your life that you will sense God's love and God's strength for you and that you will know that it is the lamb upon the throne that we should be entrusting our lives to not a not a donkey not an elephant but the lamb upon the throne and that may become my new saying um, because God is with us and seeing us through everything and I trust in that and I have hope in that. And I hope you do too. So, uh, so, so I shared earlier about um, Sharon had asked for prayers for Marissa, her daughter's friend, um, who they found a brain tumor. And we hope they find something out soon. Um, and I'm praying that it's benign. Praying for it to be benign and that it's treatable. Whatever. Because sometimes if it's benign, they may want to take it out. Um, so we just, we pray for the best for Marissa. Uh, still same, pray for my cousin Laura, who has a job interview that's tomorrow morning. Laura, I pray you get there on time, that you're walking fine, that you're doing great, that you put your best foot forward, no pun, pun intended, but maybe in a way I did, because I love puns. And just praying for the best for you. We continue to pray for Sarah Lanier, who's had got health problems. We pray for Andy and June Harnack. I talked to Andy briefly this morning. He sounded really good. Uh, he wasn't up for a visit, but I hope to see him soon. Continue to pray for Sherry Tidwell, who got all the, all the staples, you know, not stitches, all the staples out of her knee. Bill was by today, and his her husband, and said that it hurt more when they took him out than she thought they would, but she's doing excellent. She's doing really great. So, good evening, Deb. Deb, we're going to pray for you, too. You said that you uh, have to see an orthopedist and that you're having real problems with your ankle and your leg. So we're praying for you and praying that you'll find a great doctor who will be able to help you and help, help you get back on the right track with what you're dealing with. And praying for sleep for you, praying for sleep for Sarah, praying for sleep for anyone else who's dealing with sleep problems that you'll be able to rest well. Also ask for prayers for a special intention, praying for uh, friends and 
family of friends who are dealing with COVID. That includes Nate and Chris Piles. Um, praying for Amy, who's stage four uh, ovarian cancer, Laura's friend, but is doing well now. We pray that she will continue to, to do well. Pray for Jamie, who I married to Jason and whose cancer has been on and off in remission. She is stage four and has two little girls. And I just pray for all the time that God will give her a long life, that she'll be able to hang in there in stage four. So definitely, Deb, definitely praying for sleep for you. Definitely, definitely. Um, also uh, praying for Jamie uh, for cancer too. I have down. Yes. And I think it's also stage four. Um, so we pray for that. Um, and I think, I think that's it. Um, pray, just pray for our, our land, pray for people here, pray that we put our trust and our hope and our faith in God and that we do all we can to reach out to each other, to continue to love each other, that even when we don't agree on issues, that we will look beyond that and we will find ways to be open to each other, to be caring to each other, to fight for what is right, to stand up for others who are persecuted or are um, uh, judged by the color of their skin instead of by who they are as a person and to just keep working uh, to have mercy and to work for justice in our land. Um, and we pray for the missionaries around the world. We pray for their safety. We pray for all lands, for God created the whole world. And we just ask for, um, pray pray for all those dealing with COVID, all the frontline workers, and there are many, and praying for those who are in grief for having lost loved ones who, um, who have con contracted COVID and have died from it. So we pray for those and all of those who are in grief, um, especially this early part of November. As Nanette reminded me, the Day of the Dead was the other day because it's All Saints Day, All Souls Day, and um, I don't know if also, I think All Souls Day is the same as the Day of the Dead, but, but no, Day of the Dead is All Saints Day. I'm almost sure because it's the Mexican. If you've seen the movie Coco, if you haven't seen the movie Coco, it's fabulous, just absolutely fabulous. And I absolutely love it. It's a Pixar, but it is so darn good. And it's so, so, so wonderful. Just absolutely love it. Watched it a month ago with Christopher again. And, oh, it's just great. So, anyway. All right. Well, dear family, dear friends, it's so good to be with you tonight. I pray, I pray for those, for whatever you're dealing with, that God knows it and God, God hears it. I pray for peace for all of us. I pray for good rest for all of us. For those who watch this on Friday morning, I ask, and for all of you, I pray that you have a great Friday. And like I said, we're probably going to record early so Sam can go help out with the garage sale and then uh, share it at seven o'clock tomorrow night. Um, if anything changes with that, I'll put a note up on the Facebook page. We do have worship on Sunday. We will be honoring our veterans. We're going to have a card writing. We're going to pass out some cards with either a name on it or that we need it for Thanksgiving just to wish someone a blessed Thanksgiving and ask people to uh, write those um, and, and then turn those back in, especially the ones for uh, Charlie Parks. We want to, Charlie is a veteran. He's not able to get out. He, um, and he has a real rough time. Uh, but he has great care at home, and we want to celebrate him and let him know that we're thinking of him. So we'll have some card writing. If you've got any canned goods or you want to give a donation of funds, we're collecting canned goods for Thanksgiving meals, including also rice and macaroni and cheese boxes, as well as all the ingredients uh, except for turkey. Uh, there will be a turkey drive in our community uh, on next Tuesday. November 10th, I think it's four to seven or five to seven at Truett's Grill. If you bring bring a $10 gift card or a turkey, you will get a t-shirt for turkeys from the Joy FM. And those turkeys will be donated to Salvation Army. 
and those turkeys will go with the boxes that we are putting together on the 15th of uh, November. We'll do that after church. We'll put those together, and I'll need help transporting them. We also are in need of some people who can come in to answer the phones uh, for a few hours the next couple weeks so that if people call looking for meals for Thanksgiving, people can you can give them the different alternatives of things, um, ways to help them be able to get a Thanksgiving meal this year. So, all right, that's it. Uh, great to be with you tonight. Blessings to all of you tomorrow. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a blessed night, a great rest, especially for those of you who are struggling. And just remember, if God puts somebody's name on your heart, or in your mind, I take that as a sign to reach out to them and let them know you're thinking of them. Have a blessed night.